Now, Plymouth is a city of world first, and it started way back in the day in 1770 when Captain Cook discovered Australia after setting off from the Plymouth Sound behind me. More recently, Sir Francis Chichester became the first person to sail single-handedly around the globe, departing and finishing in this patch of water. And now the city is set to reignite its love affair with the sea, with the launch of the UK's first ever National Marine Park, an initiative that's received more than £9.5 million of funding from the National Lottery, and given Plymouthians an opportunity to get to know the ocean a little bit better. We have seen over the last 10 years or so that a lot of people have turned their back to the sea and yet we are an island nation and there are some really good reasons why people don't come to the beach. Some of it's uncertainty, some of it's not being able to swim and we really want to understand how we can fix those problems. A marine park is basically a park in the sea so it's somewhere where people can come and enjoy, they can swim, they can do activities so it's a place where people can really celebrate everything that's good about being out and about near the sea. They can have a go at various different kinds of water sports, things that they probably wouldn't have thought to try. The marine parks that currently exist are very much about protect. Yes, we want to protect, but actually we want to make sure that our people can come and enjoy it. So access is really important. From the economic point of view, tourists love to come to places that are beautiful. So by being able to say we're a national marine park, people actually understand what those words mean. And we want to be able to sort of act as the people who provide the roadmap for others. Plymouth is quite unique being a city on the sea with the biggest naval base in Western Europe. So if we can do it in Plymouth, well, pretty much anybody should be able to follow our lead. We've been doing lots of work with uh, local dive clubs, local photographers, because but actually accessing under the water is much more difficult. So for us, that's a big part of it. It's actually being able to show and tell. Plymouth Sound, which you can see behind you, is possibly the most protected body of water we have in this country. So we've got battle wrecks under sea, we've got over 600 wrecks, and they're actually fabulous for the marine life because they provide a three-dimensional structure in the sea, but it is under pressure. We all know the climate's changing and we need to be really careful. We are looking at developing what we call the digital park, and that can be everything from virtual reality tours through to little quizzes to filming and so on. And then wrap into that all of the amazing science that happens here in the city, um, which includes actually having a boy that monitors all of our salinities and tides and so on. And you can have real time data back at the university, which anyone can go and look at. And the only way you get people to change their behaviours and protect things that are valuable and important is to help them enjoy it first. Then you help them understand why it's a cool place and then you, you encourage them to help to act. When you look out to the sound, you can see most of the National Marine Park, but you can't see what's truly lurking beneath the surface. Plymouth has a long-standing history of marine innovation. And when you dive a little bit deeper, you can see that it holds the key to the future of ocean science and marine technology. Plymouth is a global centre of excellence for marine science. There are more marine scientists in Plymouth than anywhere else in the country and marine science in Plymouth has been at the cutting edge of the understanding of both the marine environment and particularly the impacts of man on the marine environment over the last hundred years. The concept of Smart Sand is to provide a space where we can test, validate marine autonomy and make measurements with a minimum of human interaction. Now part of this is, is looking at the, the sort of the coexistence of, of how do you balance all the users of the marine environment. It provides the information to ensure that the National Park is doing what we want it to do and protect and sustain the environment. At the same time, it's also providing opportunities for business growth and development to benefit the wider city and the population of the Southwest. We have autonomous vehicles, we have data buoys, we have remote sensing, we have models. So we're capable of characterising the whole system. The uh, area outside of Plymouth, Plymouth Sound and the seas around it, are some of the most intensively sampled marine seas in the world and therefore some of the best understood. We also have very sophisticated surface communication systems, both 4 and 5G, and very shortly we'll be seeing the installation of an underwater network as well. It's unique in the fact that it is the first offshore 5G network in the country. It's available as a free point of access innovation service for commercial customers to be able to deploy their assets in the smart sound and be able to communicate what they're measuring back in real time. PML and smart sound are, are going to make a contribution to SailGP and we're going to provide real time information on wind speed and direction. We're also going to be providing information from the boys on wave height and direction as well. 
So it's really where sport meets science.